Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, August 11th, 2020. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel and are operating remotely until further notice in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present, and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Building and Contracts Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Hun. Ms. Rowe. Here. Ms. Mack. Here. Mr. McMillian. Here. A quorum is present. Ms. Slade, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Andrew Nussbaum. Here, I'm sorry, here. Daryl Williams. Daryl Williams. Mary Boswell McComas. Present. William Burke. Present. Christina Byers. Christina Byers. Michael Dickerson. Here. Raquel Jones. Present. Maria Lowry. Present. Mar George Roberts. Here. Brian Scriven. Present. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Michael Zarchin. Michael Zarchin. Bernard Adams. Present. Barbara Burnop. Present. James Corns. Present. Pete Dixit. Present. Michael Groff. Present. Margaret Ann Howie. Here. Meryl Plate. Here. Karen Levenstein. Present. Amalio Nieves. Present. Charles Patillo. Present. Ann Rung Fark San Gavrun. Here. George Saris. Present. Megan Shea. Present. Are there any other staff members participating in today's meeting that were not mentioned? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to come forward and present contracts one through 15. Thank you, Ms. Ch Ms. Rowe. This is George Saris. And the first item that we have is JNI 728-15, Envision Math 2.0. 
This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Pearson Education Incorporated to Savas Learning Company, LLC. There is one award bidder on the original contract approved by the board on uh, in June 2015. Board members, are there any questions? Mr. Saris, this is Lisa Mack. Good e afternoon. Almost evening, yeah. Um, are we, is the product staying the same and we're just giving the business to another company? Well, what happened here is that this, the Scott Forsman math series that we use um, was a product of Pearson Publishing, and Pearson has decided to exit the K through 12 uh, instructional materials market, and they have sold this um, subsidiary to uh, Savas Learning Company, which is now owned by Nexus Capital, which is a uh, private equity firm. So the product is still the same. Uh, we will just be dealing uh, with a different vendor. Okay, and looks like the total expenditures to date have been 2.5, and with the previous contract spending authority, we would be spending about $400,000 with Savas. That would be the limit of this contract uh, through 2025 unless we return to the board uh, for additional authority. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. In the budget that the board had first put forward, we were um, our plan is to replace the elementary math curriculum for all elementary grades. But based on the funding we received, we're doing a multi-year rollout. So the hope would be that next year we will um, hopefully get funding to extend the Bridges math curriculum to the elementary grades, and then it wouldn't be necessary to rebid this contract. I see. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Sarris, you can move to the next one. Thank you. The next item is JNI 767-14, Secondary Mathematics Intervention Materials. This is a contract modification to provide for the continued use of a web-based mathematics intervention program for students in grades 6 through 12. Approval is requested to extend the contract for four years and increase spending authority by $450,000 bringing the revised total contract spending authority to uh, $1,805,000 with one uh, awarded vendor approved by the board in April 2014. And the additional requested spending authority of $450,000 uh, is, is all funded by the uh, Coronavirus Relief Fund tutoring grant for which uh, this product will be used. Board members, are there any questions? This is Lisa Mack. I have a question. Uh, Mr. Saris, was my understanding on the tutoring grant, the money had to be used by December 31st, 2020? Is that correct? Uh, essentially, yes. It's actually MSDE points out every time we talk about this, for some reason, December 30th. Oh, okay. I guess they have New Year's Eve plans. Okay. And so will we meet the requirement to spend the, the modification amount by then? Yeah. Yes, we will. 
Okay, and then specifically, and I think this might be a Ms. Shea or Dr. McComas question, down in the description where it says the program expands the opportunity for online learning and to provide individualized tutoring, is this going to, this is in use today, That's is that correct? Yes, so this is Ms. Shea. Hi, Ms. Mack. Um, so we currently have the use of a program called Ascend in um, secondary math, but it is currently has been in use as a part of a support or a supplemental resource used in many of our middle schools and about four high schools. So with the addition of the grant funds that Mr. Saris described, we're now going to be able to expand this offering so that um, any number of students in all of our middle and high schools will have access to a license to ascend. And then, although the contract doesn't reflect this, as Mr. Sarah said, the tutoring grant funds also allows us to um, hire tutors to support that. So this would allow us to expand the offering of licenses um, to all the students in our secondary, um, middle and high schools that would need it. Okay, thank you very much for that. So my sure. question is, it, when students go offline, if you will, for asynchronous learning starting September 8th or the next week or whatever it is, will the, and, and the students use this program for individualized tutoring, will the student's teacher have access to how what the student has done in the program and how much the student has learned or progressed? Yes. Yes, so um, part of the reason the team selected this was because the program does provide um, reports for both the student and their family and the teacher so that the teacher can um, not only monitor how the student is making progress, but can also um, make the content dynamic so they can provide specific modules or assign content uh, to students to cover specific topics or specific um, concepts in math as needed. Does the program have that? intelligence to do that or does it take the student's score and say this student um, obviously knows algebra one I'm going to throw in some algebra two questions so it has both it does have the adaptive technology or intelligence as you described it um, which is a great way to put it <laughs> um, it does adapt for the student based on assessment as the student enters the program but it also allows for the teacher to um, manipulate that content on a customized basis Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Board members, are there any other questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sarris, you can move on to the next item. Okay, thank you. Um, here, the next item is MWE 800-21 math support and intervention for elementary students. This is a new contract for math support and intervention for elementary students for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $386,750. Board members, are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sears, please move to the next item. Uh, thank you. The next item, MWE 801-21, Reading Intervention for Secondary Schools. This is a new contract for reading intervention program for secondary schools for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with a four-year extension and with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2.5 million. Board members, are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sayers, please move to the next item. Okay. The next item, CWA 134-20, Physical Education Uniforms. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide physical education uniforms for the Office of Health and Physical Education. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with nine recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $440,000. Board members, are there any questions? I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Shea, I'm curious, is this a generic gym suit 
So if a kid moves from the east side to the west side, he uses the same gym suit. So this um, contract, good, good afternoon, Mr. McMillian. Um, so this um, contract has several different bidders and there are multiple designs. One includes the generic, but it does still allow schools to have a school specific uniform that might reflect their um, logo or their um, mascot or colors. Gotcha. So it takes out the responsibility of the, you know, a local teacher, administrator, whoever, from selling the suits and collecting the money. Yeah. So this uh, is, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, please. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, so you, some of you may recall that um, this was in response to an audit that was done several years ago as an effort to streamline the process. And what you just described, Mr. McMillian, is a really important part of it which is that each of these vendors does allow for direct purchase from a website from the family, cutting out the middleman at the schoolhouse, as you described, which was a really important recommendation that we were trying to honor. Um, so it allows for that um, direct access for families. So no gym suits will be sold in a middle school or a high school across the county. That is Directly correct. Directly sold yes. from a person in a schoolhouse to a family. The only thing that I would want to double check on is that we do sometimes um, have gym uniforms that are given to students from the, at the schoolhouse, but the selling should be happening, just so that I'm clear, the selling or purchasing should be happening directly from the vendor using these nine awarded bidders because that was a part of the bid was that they had to offer that direct online access. And if a school has an inventory of old gym suits that students have donated or whatever, those can still be used as a loaner to Correct. students who don't have a gym suit? Correct. Loaners should not be sold, though. They should not be resold. Those would just be given to students that needed it. You put a smile on my face, Ms. Shea. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to sign off now, then, so I'm ahead. No, I'm just kidding. Don't <laughs> sign off, Ms. Shea, because <laughs> I had a computer problem. And we, if Ms. Rowe, if possible, could we go back to MWE 801-21? Uh, yes, we can. Did you have a question about that? For Ms. Shea or Dr. Sure. McComas. Um, so, Ms. Shea, this is for secondary schools, if I understand it, where a, a, a student is reading two grade levels below, two, two years below grade level in middle and high schools. Is that a true statement? Yes. So, this is for students who've been identified for a tier two or tier three, and that is typically two or more years below grade level, correct? And is this going to be delivered as part of a teacher's responsibility with differentiated learning or is this tutoring what what is this it's a great question so it's actually be, because of the additional funding from the grant it's actually going to be utilized both ways this year so we do have we have been piloting um, a reading intervention course for secondary students who would need it in the first way that you described so these are students that um, reading is continues to be something that they are striving. They need a dedicated course. It is part of their daily schedule. We have a teacher, we train them, and this program would be a part of that course for students. In addition, because of the grant funding, we are also able now in this year to add the additional purchase of licenses for students who may not have a specific need for a course, but especially due to recent circumstances and disruptions in learning, may benefit from having access to a license, and then we would use the tutoring grant, grant the student that access to a license, and then their support would come in that form of that tutoring, but they may not be enrolled in a full-time course because that might not be appropriate. So, and this is a general question for every one of these contracts that mentions tutoring. Who are the tutors? Where are they coming from? When are they coming on board? So pending the approval of the contract, <laughs> um, when we had the notice of grant award, the next step would be then to communicate with schools the availability of this. And then the um, tutoring would hopefully be BCPS employees that could be hired um, to serve in that capacity beyond the school hours. And then my last question is, is this built more on an open court model or more on Fontes and Pinnell? Um, what, what reading strategies is this type of, actually I have two questions, this, this yep. one, what, what reading strategies does this utilize? 
So the um, Read 180 in particular um, is more of a comprehension base. So both open court, um, when you first described open court, that's more, as you know, um, foundational skills or phonics right. and phonemic awareness. So the Read 180 program is specifically comprehension based. The addition of System 44 does add a phonics based multi sensory approach more in line with what you're familiar with with open court. Okay, and it says each teacher will also receive a student classroom library and a teacher kit for implementation. Am I yes. to understand that before school starts, each one of these, uh, is it each classroom teacher and each tutor teacher will receive this in, to use in their homes? So no, so that's um, that's where we talked about the differential. So there are some instances where this is being used for a class who has an actual uh, course and a teacher, and then the licenses and the tutoring would be for that supplemental resource. So the tutors wouldn't have a classroom library, but in places where it's an actual course scheduled into the day, that teacher would receive that classroom library. Now, obviously, this year we'll have to think about what that looks like, but hopefully there will be a time when we have. Everyone's right, helping safe understand. and we can access it, but yeah. So teachers who will be doing this will be notified the week before September 8th, is, is that correct? So the Not teachers, the tutor the, teachers, but the classroom right, the, teachers. The teachers who have this, so that, um, this contract allows us, the schools that were piloting it, to continue. So those teachers have already been participating, and then we have an additional four schools um, that wanted to expand that have been asking. So they're all already aware. They have access to training. Um, so that will all come together pending the approval. Um, if we had not gotten the approval, we would have just maintained the pilot because it had been um, cut short. So those teachers are aware of this opportunity and will participate in the training. The tutoring will be a new piece pending um, the next step because of the tutoring grant funding becoming available. Okay, thank you for answering all my questions. Sorry, of I, I had to chat, go backwards. I wondered why you were quiet, Miss Mack. I, I know. Figured. I bet you did. I just <laughs> my thing froze, and I had to sign out and sign back in. I had wondered, but thank you for the questions. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, Miss Mack, I just have to say I'm so proud of our curriculum committee members. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do learn stuff there for sure. <laughs> you do ask good questions. Well, good because I'm ready to ask questions about ASI 80220. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. first, can we finish the gym uniform one? Are there any no, other I questions we did. about I'm the? Sorry. Are there any other questions about the uniforms? Hearing none, Mr. Sarris, will you present the next item, please? Thank you. Then uh, item number six is ASI 802-20 intensive reading program. This is the new contract to provide the intensive reading program for students in grades three to five for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $400,000. Board members, are there any questions? Yes, this is Lisa. Go ahead. So how does this differ from open court? So open court will be our tier one. This is now our core program for direct instruction. The program that we're bringing to you tonight would serve as a tier two supplemental. So we have had SIPs as a supplemental program, mostly for primary grade students. But what we know is that we continue. Now, hopefully that will get better as we have open court in K through three um, for the first time this year. But we know that we currently have students in third, fourth and fifth grade that still need a tier two supplement. So this contract is for students in grades three, four and five who would have as a tier two supplement to their direct instruction, the need to continue working on uh, foundational literacy, including phonics, um, especially with multisyllabic phonics. So oh, our that open court- be my question. So, okay. Yep. So okay. not- how much level literacy is in this? Any? Nope. Mm -mm. This is all um, based on foundational literacy to build on um, what they would learn in a foundational skills course like Open Court, which again is our tier one solution for K through three. So this would be that supplement on uh, foundational things such as phonemic awareness, phonics, and fluency um, for our students in the intermediate grade. So that we, you know, we work really closely, as you well know, from curriculum committee. Um, the Office of ELA and the um, Department of Special Education work collaboratively to make sure that we have a comprehensive menu for that multi-tiered system of supports. Um, and this was a missing link for our students in the intermediate grades to have that supplemental tier two to build on that foundational skills instruction. So is this an, a classroom by itself or again, is this a teacher who is expected to differentiate and use this tool to differentiate? 
It's a great question. Typically, and it differs in different schools, typically the training begins with the reading specialist um, who works collaboratively with classroom teachers. The instruction itself can be delivered by a classroom teacher in a supplementary small group piece or the reading specialist or a special educator, all of which are appropriate. Um, in some cases, paraeducators support it. They, we, we don't want them to be the um, right, sole right. instructor, but they certainly can supplement it. Um, but the way we initially begin with something like this would be to train all the reading specialists. And in some instances, you're breaking up just a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Is okay. that better? Yes, thank you. Um, in some instances, the classroom teacher would utilize this resource as part of their supplemental small group, um, but more likely it would be a reading specialist using it as part of the reading program. And this, the, the textbooks, the supplemental readers, the materials of instructions, the visual and auditory aids, stationery and school supplies will all be available to be to the, to the reading specialist when school starts, or is this something we plan to do after we do a um, like assessments and things like that. So um, because we had to wait for the contract approval before we purchased anything, um, the availability of the materials will depend on um, what we're able to do for distribution based on the safety and health of the teachers. Um, ultimately, yes, these will be materials that will be available for teachers and reading specialists to access. It will just be a matter of coming up with a plan based on timing uh, when we're able to actually have them available for teachers. But in the meantime, uh, pending the board approval of the contract this evening, um, we do have the ability to access digital materials for some teachers to use in the interim. And I want to apologize. I see here that we discussed this April 7th, but I have to be honest and say April 7th seems like <laughs> a lifetime Years ago. ago. It sure does. That's so, okay. Um, it, it sounded vaguely familiar, but thank yep. you for answering my questions. Of course. Board members, are there any other questions? Mr. Saris, I just have one. Could you please go into how the vendor was selected since I see that there were no bids? Uh, yes, this was selected through uh, Rule 6002 um, and uh, I'm sure Ms. Shea could uh, provide you with I the can. details, but there's <laughs> a selection and review committee and uh, there was an evaluation and criteria assigned yeah. and so forth. Correct. We did. Thank you, Mr. Zares. Um, as he described, we used um, the evaluation process outlined in Rule 6002. We had uh, 22 participants that included administrators, classroom teachers, special educators. Uh, we had representation from TAGCO, ESOL, um, as well as a community member from um, a constituency group that is uh, very passionate about reading instruction in the county. So we had some external stakeholders participate as well. Okay, thank you. Sure. Mr. Sheriff, you may move on to the next item, please. Thank you. The next item, CWA-131-20, uh, technical support to implement a community school strategy uh, for the Department of Social Emotional Support. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1.6 million. And uh, this is funded by the Concentration of Poverty Grant, which we first uh, received in FY20. Board members, are there any questions? This is Lisa Mack. Um, I have a, I, I understand the community schools model. Um, what is $1.6 million going to give us a, a certain number of schools? Um, is it going to fund the efforts to create community schools? Um, what specifically are we getting for $1.6 million? I, this is Good afternoon. Thank you for that question. I envision that um, this funding will help support 
the current four schools that uh, were identified for fiscal year 20, which are Deep Creek Elementary School, Hawthorne Elementary School, Riverview Elementary School, and Sandalwood Elementary School, and then would also support the additional six schools that have been identified for fiscal year 21, which are Baltimore Highlands, Colgate Elementary, Logan Elementary, Halstead Elementary, Martin Boulevard Elementary, and Shady Spring Elementary School. And uh, then this would support the schools in understanding uh, and implementing best practices for the community schools model. Uh, there would be assistance with strategic planning. It, there would be um, needs assessments, assistance with conducting a needs assessment and interpreting that data. Um, then model impl implementation, and then ongoing professional uh, learning uh, throughout the implementation period. Could it result in additional staffing for either the four original schools or the 2021 schools, or is it it's not staffing, it's the model, it's the support? It's the model and the support because the funding from the Concentration of Poverty Schools grant um, allocates funding for staff, um, and what it does, it allows for uh, a funding for a community school liaison at each of the schools, as well as uh, support for staffing um, in the health services realm. And so, for example, we've been able to increase funding uh, to, to have a full-time nurse uh, or add additional health support at, at those schools. And then there's funding um, in the Concentration of Poverty Schools grant for wraparound services. So we can also engage community mental health providers to provide a wraparound supports to students and families. And my last question is this, I don't, I obviously know the schools in my area well, but I don't know the other schools. It seems to me like most of the schools named were elementary schools. Is that a true statement? That is correct. Um, the criteria for receiving funding for fiscal year 20 was that 80% of the students at the schools had to be eligible for free or reduced meals. Um, for fiscal year 21, uh, schools had to have at least 75% eligibility for free or reduced meals. And so all of those have resulted in uh, the identification of elementary schools. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Ms. Rowe, I have a question for Mr. George. Go ahead. George, you mentioned the Kerwin report. Could you repeat that, the connection here between these two? Yes. Yeah, so this is one of the five uh, programs that was first implemented in fiscal year 20. And uh, in, in which year we received about $23 million. Uh, much of it, the, the two largest programs were uh, to improve teacher compensation and, and to support special education. And um, this is one of the three more targeted programs and it's the only one, oops, Hello? I'm here. I'm not sure what just happened. Oh, okay. I thought it was me. No? I can hear you, Ms. Mack and Ms. Um, Rao. Uh, yeah, I can hear everyone. It appears the video stopped. I don't yeah, hear Ms. Mr. Saris. Yeah, I think he I think he froze, Ms. Rao, so. Sorry. I, oh, there he's back. Good. I uh, usually lose my connection once or twice a day. And it's usually at the worst possible time. So uh, where I left off is that this is the one, uh, the one of the of the of the five grants within Kerwin uh, that is being expanded for this year, and uh, so we're fortunate in that sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Saris, I have a question. Um, so 
I'm familiar with this community schools model and the liaison. And it sounds like what you're saying is that this, um, the YMCA is gonna be serving in sort of the liaison capacity. Is this to use their resources and their network to connect the school with community resources? Ex exactly, exactly what is the YMCA expected to do? It looks like he's frozen again. Maybe this is a question for Mr. Nieves anyway. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, again, um, the last school year, uh, the YMCA through col in collaboration with uh, the Title I um, office, we were able to provide professional learning for the four schools um, on the community schools model. So the YMCA, will serve at, in a consulting role with the with the schools that are engaged in the model, helping them uh, through their needs assessment process, being able to have the schools interpret the data from the needs assessment and then work with the schools in order to uh, develop a strategic plan that meets the needs of their particular uh, uh, students and families in, the, in those communities and then design any professional design and deliver any professional learning that is needed. Okay, so we're basically contracting them to actually implement the startup of these programs. That is correct, and to support it throughout. Is, is there a reason that we chose the YMCA in particular? Well, the YMCA has had um, extensive experience with the community schools model, and they've been doing it uh, um, previously. And as I mentioned before, they had already been providing support to many of these schools through uh, a Title I office. This sounds fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are there any other questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sears, you could move on to the next item, please. Thank you. The next item, ARA 209-20, Records Management Services. This contract modification will provide for the continued use of records management consulting services for the Office of Law. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $100,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $175,000 dollars with one awarded vendor approved by the board in May 2020. Board members, are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, will you please present the next item? Uh, thank you. Okay, well, here. Well, I've somehow lost my content here. Um, let me read from the actual agenda. I have the next item as being JLE 612-20. Yes. That helps. That does help. And I'm going to find it here. Uh, sorry for the delay. In addition to my connection, I lost the uh, well. I lost the server connection. So let me go back George, here. George, if it's okay, I can read the board exhibit, and there are folks who can answer the questions. So do Thanks. I have your permission to do that? Yeah. Thank you, Pete. Go ahead. The next contract, JLE six twelve twenty, is for vehicle lifts, garage, and fleet maintenance equipment. This contract will provide for garage hand and power tools and equipment for the Office of Transportation. The contract is in the amount of $400,000. It is for operating budget 
and this request is for an extension of one year. So this request is for, uh, I want to make sure the term is three years, four months. BCPS will procure these goods under the source well contract number 013010SNP. So, thank you, have any Thank you, Pete. And, and this uh, is for our uh, fleet maintenance, and it uh, provides uh, tools for auto mechanic, our fleet technicians, and uh, many, many of whom who own their tools. But uh, part of our recruitment program is to uh, not only hire some of our CTE graduates, but to also provide tools uh, to employees just starting out in the profession. And the industry typically owns, uh, individuals own their tools. And so we've added this uh, to support um, the new mechanics that we hire and getting a, their, their basic toolboxes set up. Board members, are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, I have a question. Yes. So um, is there any amount of time that a person has to be employed with BCPS um, for them to be able to keep these tools? Um, no, there isn't. Um, and maybe Mr. Groff or Mr. Patillo could answer that question in more in any more depth if they're aware. Hi, this is uh, Michael Groff. Um, the tools aren't going to be property of the um, employees that we buy them, so that, you know they're ultimately BCPS property um, as they come and go. Right now, it looks like we have about sixty-six employees that you know that could use tools or have their own that would like a BCPS issued toolbox. I see. So if they're, if they're CTE students who are working for BCPS and they leave, find another job, whatever, the tools that we provided them stay with BCPS. They don't take them with them. That's correct. They stay with us. Okay. Thank you. Board members. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sears, we please present the next item. Thank you. The next item, GDA 302-20, Temporary Staffing Material Handlers. This is a new competitively bid contract for material handlers to support the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $175,000. Board members, are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, we please present the next item. Uh, thank you. The next item is... Uh, the next case, one is Pete, George. Yes, that's KSH 311-17, Pete. Good evening again. Uh, the next contract, KSH 311-17, is for the Hereford High School's wastewater treatment facility. This is one of the high schools that has its own wastewater treatment facility. And this contract will, uh, will provide the necessary supervision permits, labor and equipment to comply with all the federal and state regulation for this kind of, this kind of operation. It will also provide an operator continuous monitoring. Uh, some of the things that we need to, this is 24 hour per day, seven day per week, remote monitoring of the facility, including input and output flow rates, conditions of the process water, activity of bacteriological process, all of them, all of these things, which are requirements will be provided by this vendor. Uh, we are requesting that the contract be extended for six months. The funds are there, the spending authority is already there. But this time, uh, because of the COVID situation, it will help us in getting uh, other competitive vendors in due course of time. Right now, it may not be possible to do that. Board also, I'd like, to, also I'd like to share that 
we intended to bring this contract in the last meeting. If you if you see the cutoff date, I believe the end date was 7-31-2020. So we have we are a little bit over the end date. Board members, are there any questions? I have a general have question. One. This is Lisa. Go Ryan, ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask Mr. Pete. He mentioned this is one of the high schools that have their own wastewater treatment. What other schools have that? This that is was my the, question too. So go. Okay. Go ahead. So that's, uh, my apologies for making the wrong or erroneous statement. What I meant, this is the high school that is not on county or city sanitary or storm drainage system. It has its own wastewater treatment facility. All of the other high schools are. Okay, thank you. Board members, are there any other questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sears, will you please present the next item? Next item is CWA 11920 is for material contract. This is for um, the contract. This is just a consent to the assignment of this contract from Maryland Paving Inc. to Maryland Paving, a division of Gray and Son. There is no additional time or material or, or, or dollars requested for this. Board members, are there any questions? Mr. Sayers, did they just change their the name of the company? Uh, no, they the uh, Maryland Paving Incorporated was acquired by Gray and Son. I see. Thank you. Are well, there any other questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sayers, please present the next item. Thank you again. The next item is JBO 709-20 for building envelope inspection. Uh, I'd like to provide a little bit of background for that contract. Building envelope inspection service consists of checking and inspecting roof before construction, after construction, the brick walls, the windows for any leaks. Some of these are requirement, new requirement from the State of Maryland Public School Construction Program. And some of it to muscle up our preventive maintenance program as the board has uh, asked us to do. So I just wanted you to know that this is our uh, effort to increase and solidify preventive maintenance program and comply with uh, the IAC requirements. Board members, are there any questions? This is Lisa. I have a quick question. Um, Mr. Dixit, as part of the new 10-year multi-year improvement plan, um, I think it's a three-part plan, and one of them is looking at the condition of facilities. Will some of this be used for that, or will they do their own independent evaluation of facilities? They are doing their own independent evaluation. They are asking for a lot of information from us. So we have been sharing information, whatever we have, and openly and in a transparent manner. So we are assisting us in their evaluation, but the inspection of the building itself, they are doing it. They have sent a team of engineers and architects to every building to check that. But our data helps us. All of the capital improvements that we have made in the past, they know of it. They have copy of all of the capital projects that, that we have com um, completed in the past. Okay. Okay. Board members, are there any other questions? Mr. Dixit, I have questions. Uh -huh. um, so this, it sounds like that what will happen is the vendor will be updating um, the 2014 facilities assessment. They'll be looking at every single facility again. No, no. Uh, th this, this inspection program is to inspect roof conditions twice every year. This is a state requirement. They require, when we submit a request for capital project, state wants to look at our inspection of those roofs. If we install roof, we would like an independent party to inspect it. 
for the quality of work that has been done. If there are any window leaks, we would like for them to check it before they damage any other part of the building. If there are any leaks in the walls, we'll have a structured preventive maintenance program instead of just trying to do as much as we can do on our own. I see. So this isn't really directly related to the um, facility's tenure plan, this, but this, this is information not. May, may be provided to them. Will it be forwarded to the vendor who's doing the facility's tenure plan? If they ask for that information, it will be provided to them. They have already asked for previous inspection that we have done our on our own using in-house forces. And whenever they ask for it, we share copies of that. Okay. So, so any they are and doing... All, yeah, I, I want to clarify that any and all material that we have that may assist them in their evaluation, we are sharing with them. Okay. So, but they're doing their own assessments of each building as well, similar to the 2014 assessment, or is it different than that somehow? This is more robust than 2014 assessment. They are, okay. They, yes, yes. If That's anything, great. yeah, and they are doing their own independent inspection. You know, I like preventative maintenance. Yes, you <laughs> and and Miss Mac both have been talking about it. So every time we get a chance, I we know. add him. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Board members, are there any other questions? Hearing none, please present the next item. The next item is JB072220 for Domestic Water Heater Preventive Maintenance Program. Uh, this contract is for preventive maintenance, for repair and installation of domestic water heater. This is the hot water that is used in restrooms and is generally not used in the heating of the in the, in the of the building so the domestic hot water system is separated from the boiler in most of the cases to 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 to, pro, to save energy so that we can use just the domestic hot water system when the heating is not required so like any other system it needs periodic preventive maintenance and it needs replacement this contract will take care of those issues board members are there any questions Hearing none, please present the next item. Uh, the next item is CWA 128-20. This is for repairs and preventive maintenance of elevators. And, and it's just that simple. The same thing, if it breaks down, we get, get hold of one of these contractors and there is a regular preventive maintenance program for those elevators. Board members, are there any questions? Hearing none, please present the next item. I think this was the last item that I had. George, did I miss any any other? No, nope, that's the last item I had as well. Thank you, Pete. You're you're on mute, Mrs. Ruff. You are mute. Board members, do I have a motion to recommend items one through fifteen to the full board for approval? So moved, Lisa Mack. Thank you, Ms. Mack. May I have a second? I'll second it. Ms. Slade, can I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. The motion carries. Is there any further business? Since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.